All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over uh, gross anatomy, microscopic anatomy, and physiology, all right? Just those three, keep it short and simple. So, what is gross anatomy? Gross anatomy are your organs and their locations. It's as simple as that. It's like pointing at this is a liver, that's a, that's a arm, this is the heart, and it's in this location, that location, and that location. So it's as simple as that. Let me make a little explanation. So, um, so this right here would be the heart, right? Put a H for a heart. And then alongside your heart, you have your lungs. So right now we're just going over uh, gross anatomy and we're talking about the big parts, the organs. So we're talking about organs. So the, here's your heart, then you have your two lungs. Um, then you have your inferior vena cava, which, which is a big vessel that returns blood back to the heart from the bottom part of the body. And so right now, well, what I am discussing is just the anatomy of your heart. So what is what and where is it? So your heart and your chest, I mean, I'm sorry, your heart and your lungs are found in your thoracic cavity. So thoracic cavity is your chest. So for example, so your heart and your lungs are found in your thoracic cavity. So just to give you a better example, I'm gonna walk over here. I think we have a mannequin that I can use real quick. Where's that at? All right, so this mannequin right here. All right, so your heart would be found behind this bone right here. It's called the sternum. These are your ribs right here, so your, your heart would lie behind the sternum and your lungs would lie within your rib cage right here, okay? And this is what anatomy is. It's simply just what is where, and that's it. Now, microscopic anatomy, there's another one. Microscopic anatomy, we're talking about the cells and the tissue that make up the parts of gross anatomy. So. We'll say that this right here represents a liver, right? So this is a liver. When I say liver, as far as anatomy goes, we're talking about gross anatomy. Now, microscopic anatomy is the tissue, the tissue and then the cells within that tissue that make the liver. So just real quick, gross anatomy, we're talking about organs and their location. Microscopic anatomy, we're talking about tissue that make up the organs and then the cells that make up the organs, I'm sorry, the tissue. Tissue, okay? So microscopic anatomy, we're talking about cells. And then also the tissue that's created by the cells being there. And then the liver is made up of tissue, of liver tissue, and that's gross anatomy. So we're going from micro, microscopic anatomy, the small stuff, that make the big stuff. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Uh, physiology. So you always hear about anatomy and physiology. Physiology is the function of organs, tissues, and cells. So pretty much how everything works together. So we're when we talk about physiology, it's just how the anatomy works with each other. Um, in other words, how all the parts work together, like I said. So for example, going back to this drawing, when blood, get a different pen. When blood returns to the heart, right? On the right side of the heart, blood will travel from the atrium. So blood is received in the, in the atrium, the right atrium. Blood will go down to the right ventricle, right here. From the right ventricle, via the pulmonary artery, put pulmonary artery, that blood is then taken to the lungs, to both lungs. So I'll write a, a little passage going to both lungs. Now within the lungs, remember, Air goes into your lungs, oxygen. When you breathe, your thoracic cavity expands outward, creating that negative pressure, right? So whenever your muscles contract outwardly, 
and your diaphragm goes down, we create what's called negative pressure. Well, that negative pressure sucks oxygen down your trachea into your bronchi, these are your bronchi, and then into your lungs, where that O2 that has gone into your body now latches on to the red blood cells that are traveling to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. And then that blood that now has O2 returns to the left side of the heart, the left atrium, down to the left ventricle, and then via the aorta, there's a valve, a vessel called the aorta, the, that blood that is oxygen rich will then feed the tissues of your body. So right now, I just went over the physiology of the lungs and your heart and how these two feed the tissues of the body, all right? So physiology is how all the parts in your body work together. So since I'm on here, I might as well go into it. So physiology, if every single body part and cell in your body is working together, then, let me see, can I switch this? Okay, so if every single body part here we go. Body part and cell is working in your body pro appropriately, it's, they're working good, then you have what's called homeostasis. And right now I will turn it back around. I just wanted to make sure that it was awkward the way it was. All right, so if every single body part, the anatomy, so anatomy means body parts, right? Gross anatomy, so gross anatomy, let's go back. Gross anatomy, we're talking about big body parts, organs. Microscopic anatomy, we're talking about the cells that make the tissue and the tissue that then makes the organs, all right? And the physio physiology is the function or how everything works together, whether it's down to the cell level or up in the organs, all right? We're talking about organs. And when all, when all the body parts work together appropriately, they're working good, you have what's called homeostasis. Homeostasis occurs when all the parts, parts meaning anatomy, this one sucks, meaning anatomy works simultaneously to keep a balance within the body. That means that everything's just working the way it's supposed to work and everything is getting to where it needs to go in a timely fashion. That's all that means. Now, with all that being said, we have a word called pathophysiology. Patho, think disease, all right, disease. Physiology is still the function of something, the function of anatomy of the body parts. So every time you see a patho, think disease, okay? So pathophysiology is simply just the study of the body when there's some sort of disease or virus present inside the body, okay? So it's how does the body work while there's this disease present? So for example, if you have um, a lot of plaque, so we'll say this is a vessel right here, you can see it, and you have a lot of plaque within that vessel now that's gonna create hypertension, right? So that's pathophysiology. We're talking about how this uh, CAD, coronary artery disease, affects the body and how the body's functioning now that you have this disease present. So I'm gonna flip it back. Okay, so let's go ahead and review re really quick one more time. Gross anatomy, we're talking about big organs and their locations, that is it. Microscopic anatomy, let me zone in. Why is it acting up? Okay, microscopic anatomy is tissues that make up organs and cells that make up the tissue, okay? Physiology is how everything works together. It's how the anatomy functions together, all right? So it's how air gets from your lungs to your heart to the tissues of your body. And if everything, if all the body parts are working together good, then you have what's called homeostasis, which occurs when all the parts, parts meaning anatomy, work simultaneously to keep a balance within the body. And pathophysiology, we still have physiology here from over there. So we're talking about how everything works together in the body, but when there's a disease present and what and how it works together when that disease is there. For example, I gave that CAD example. Now you have hypertension because of CAD. And it's the study of the function of part anatomy when a disease is present in the body. I hope you guys learned some stuff today and I'll catch you guys next time.